All right, we are going into our first uh, video tutorial of the spring 2022 semester. It's going to be following Unit 2. Remember, you can always go to Unit Modules off of our Canvas page to really be walked through the course content. So what we're trying to accomplish in this is an introduction to the basics of compositing with pixels. It's what's called raster imaging and compositing. You'll see some examples here. We're going to the requirements are to do something basic with line art that illustrates an original concept that we bring to it uh, first in black and white, and then we'll have the option of adding color and texture. So think of it as layering up and collaging with coloring books right? to create an original composition. I call these jumbles, like line art jumbles. In order to do this, we have to learn a little bit about how to appropriately source images. This is a big part of di digital imaging skills. Like where do you get images? How do you know what quality the images are? And then what are you allowed to do with them? And in order to blend them together, we are going to use Photoshop, but we can also use the freeware PhotoP, which is linked here. So these are the two new sites we'll kind of play with or have the option to play with. Pixabay is gonna be my recommended image sourcing site for this semester because it's Creative Commons open, it's all curated high quality content, and you don't need to worry about getting sued. Google Images we can also use, but it's everything online and, and everything that's available on Google is not legal for you to use. In order to see how we're gonna do this, we're gonna see some past uh, instructor examples, some past student examples, that's what you see up here. We'll see some more on the next screen. I am going to be giving tutorial a tutorial demo through this. You'll also see it on the exercise page where you post. It will have a step-by-step -step tutorial if you prefer to take in the information that way. And then the only thing that's due for this unit is by midnight tonight, or no, I think it's by midnight our next class, actually. We need to make sure we've submitted exercise one. I'm hoping we will have it at the beginning of next class because we're going to do a presentation critique next class for exercise one and we'll start exercise two. All right, so to move through these units, you simply use the next button. You can also use these icons. You'll see there's only three pages in this. And we see some past examples. Now, not all of these are based on banned books, but a few of them are. This one is based on the Hunger Games. That's going to be our theme for this semester, too. It supports something the library does. This one is for Lord of the Rings. This one is for The Hate You Give, and it's the demo. But you could also do this with, this is with Marvel comic book characters. This is with kind of preschool imagery. This is with fantasy, Dungeons and Dragons, role-playing kind of imagery. So the skills we use here could be used for lots and lots of of different purposes. You can find more examples in Imgur, which if you use the links page of our class, which I'll never show you on the YouTube because I don't want our, our usernames and passwords getting out on a public YouTube channel, but it will show you how to log into Imgur. And then if you go to, once you're logged in, you'll see NLC Arts Lab, you'll see this little rainbow heart. You can click on that and go to the all the posts and you'll see the different assignment examples that are kind of in disarray, but you can see student work examples there. And I'll have to work on organizing those. All right. But mainly that's where we will put our final projects at the end of the semester. And then of course, like this YouTube video, you can always click on our public YouTube channel, which is NLC Arts Lab and look at the playlists and you'll see this assignment. This is exercise one. You'll see the playlist from last semester and you can go back many semesters, though I teach it a little bit differently each time. Okay, so let's move on from there, get to the directions and actually get started. So this is all about using layers within a raster program. And raster means pixel-based. 
So this is kind of the most basic component of digital art that you're using pixels and you're layering them on top of each other. Think of it like collaging with other people's pixels. So one limitation that you will all have as creative individuals is that in this assignment, you're not allowed to create any of your own pixels. It means you're not allowed to, to draw, to paint, but you can erase, you can warp, you can transform and edit, but you cannot create your own pixels. So there's a little workaround of that that I'll show you. How is this used professionally? Well, I have some past student work here that have gone on to be um, a design firm locally called Primates Design. And there's also a fine artist I love out of Chicago that kind of inspired this project named Arturo Herrera. And here are some examples. These two on the edges are by Arturo Herrera. These are fine art compositions for those of you with the fine arts emphasis. And here he does collages. He kind of creates them all himself, but he cuts them out and then mounts them on the wall. Sometimes they're cut out of felt. Sometimes they're, they're paintings. But this is, these are both sourced from, well, can you guys tell where this line art is sourced from? It's the first feature length animated film, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Yep. Because it has a very recognizable line quality, right? And so here you can just see he's taken different portions of the dwarves, just recognizable enough and yet not recognizable enough to be sued by Disney, which is the most litigious company on the planet. So he's done a good job that way, that Arturo Herrera. And then here's one with Snow White and then adding it with some abstract expressionist splatter. And then here's a, a band t-shirt for a local San Antonio band, I recommend them, called Dreamboard, but uses the line art compositing to create a t-shirt graphic from some past students. So it's good to have a theme, right? Whatever your theme might be. And our theme is gonna be based on a band book title. Now you can make any kind of line art jumble about a, this band book that you like. It can be humorous, it can be uh, violent, it can be disturbing, it can be provocative, it can be really boring, whatever you want. But you need to pick a book title to get your your creative juices flowing that you need to react to. So this is a list of the band books in our campus collection. There's quite a few, you know, Gone with the Wind. Maybe you've seen, if you haven't read the book, maybe you've seen the movie version of a lot of these. The Sun Also Rises. I, I've never had a student that's read Ulysses by James Joyce, one of the most difficult novels in the English language. But A Wrinkle in Time, Wonderful book, terrible Disney movie. I know why the cage bird sings. So hopefully there's something here that, that sparks your imagination. I am going to be doing Cat's Cradle by Kurt Vonnegut for this semester. So once you choose a title, this demo here is for The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas, a pretty recent band book. Band books are banned. They're on the band books list. Here, let me shrink this. Because they have been challenged in court, sometimes successfully, sometimes not, to be removed from public collections. Places like from schools, from libraries, from use in public curriculum. And it's everything from the Bible to Harry Potter to like truly controversial stuff like um, Sophie's Choice. If anyone's ever read Sophie's Choice, that's, that's pretty hard. And I don't know if I want my second grader exposed to those ideas in second grade, but. And there's also Shel Silverstein's A Light in the Attic, which is interesting. Yeah, so there's so many. And this is just the, just the books that we actually have in our library collection. This is maybe like 20% of all the banned books in just the last three years. So you pick a title, I'm gonna pick Cat's Cradle. And then I want you to research it a little bit, just enough to know why it was banned and challenged and maybe a summary of, the, of what the story is, right? So for instance, The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas, 
It's a little too new to be in our collection. So that's why I use it as a demo. So no one's just doing the same one. But it, it was deemed anti-cop. And it was also challenged for its use of profanity, drug use, and sexual references. So I'm just going to go to a new tab on a Mac that's Command T. And then just on a Google search, I'm going to search my book. And then what I can do is say, this means that they are challenged. They don't always win. And I don't believe that this, that this was successful. Oh, no, it was successful in 72. It was overturned in 76. So it's interesting to see. But what I want you to, to know is kind of why something might be challenged, right? And it helps us understand the diversity of opinions about not just writing and stories and books, but also art, right? Because books are often, especially children's books, are so often on the banned books list now because they deal with things like gender issues and orientation issues and things like that. And it has to do with the imagery, you know, in the children's book. And illustration is my field, so it's something I pay attention to. So I also want to know a little bit about what the, the book is about. And a lot of Kurt Vonnegut's books got banned for profanity. You know, he's one of the, the early American authors to use pretty authentic profanity because he was a soldier in World War II. He documented those conversations accurately. So this is a science fiction book about pretty much building a new Armageddon weapon and the government's kind of mishandling of it. And it's called Ice Nine in the book. And that's just for my choice, right? All right, so get a, get a sense of it. And then once you know your selection, I'm gonna ask you to scroll all the way down and start a post. So you do that. Here are the directions here. We're just going to start a post and then we're going to edit it to add our artwork. But it's all used Screencast-O-Matic, which is a really nice free screen recorder. It works very well. The problem is that when you type, it thinks it should stop recording. So. So sometimes there'll be little awkward gaps in the videos and it's just when I'm typing and it will stop recording and then I have to type it again. So all I did was I typed in my name as I want to be referred to in the class and the name of the book and the author. And then I, I hit post. And when I have my illustration to add, I'm going to click on these three little dots and say edit and then I can add in my artwork underneath. All right, once you've selected your book, We go to step two, and I'm going to use the Firefox browser for this, just because I find on my laptop it works a little bit better, ironically. But I'm going to go to this site called autodraw.com, and this is actually a Google project that they haven't destroyed yet. So www, you can use the link in the assignment. And autodraw looks like this. It's just a simple... website and this is where I'm going to use my tablet. So you'll see that it has a magic auto draw pencil tool. If I just use the regular draw pencil underneath it without the stars it's just like any other kind of drawing program and I can draw something and I can hit command Z and undo it but we are not allowed to create pixels for this project right? What is interesting about this though, just as we learn more, I don't know, is that when you draw something, you'll notice that it, it changes right when you finish and it kind of cleans it up a tiny bit. That's because this is actually a vector program, not a raster based program, which is kind of fascinating. But you can only output pixels from it. So if you ever need to clear your image, What did I do? Let's 
Shoot, I am frozen. And you don't need to use your tablet for this, but it's a good introduction to your tablet. Basically, let's see if this will unfreeze. But if you go up here, you can say, you know, clear canvas. But what I want you to, use, to do is to use the auto draw pencil. And then instead of turning it into a vector, when you finish trying to draw something, it will give you suggestions of, is this what you were trying to draw? And it will give you a lot of clip art examples of the pencil. So go ahead and draw something with the auto draw pencil, and then you can select what you think is close. And if you're not